I'm Nigel here with the DriveWire and this is the 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro and isn't it very orange or as it should be called Solar Octane which is what it says on the build on Toyota's website. Now we last tested a 2022 Platinum version a few months ago came away very impressed in fact it was a huge improvement over the old model which had seriously been around since the time of Moses. Now today I'm going to review this car, I'm going to see how good it is, see what its faults are, and see if it can compete with the three domestic full-size pickup trucks available today. So the Tundra TRD Pro looks fairly conservative from the side, it's big, it's boxy, it sort of has a bit of a resemblance of a Silverado, kind of. You can't go crazy too much with a design on a pickup truck, unless of course you're Tesla with their Cybertruck, but pretty much this is what it is. Engine, cab, and a pickup bed. So from the front, it is pretty unmistakably a Toyota, massive grill and of course it says Toyota in these massive letters here a little bit further down here on this somewhat disruptive pattern sort of camouflaged bumper in black it also says Tundra there's a little set of cool little lights here nice set of LEDs on either side and then these tiny little lights here each of them say TRD on the inside. So how much is this car? Well, uh, 67,500 and some change plus destination. What do you get for it being a TRD Pro? Well, you get these really tasty looking BBS forged 18 inch wheels and they are wrapped with these Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires to help absorb the bumps. Additionally, you get 2.5 inch Fox shocks as well for better and smoother off-road ability. So it also has an electronically lockable rear diff. It doesn't have a center diff, but we'll talk about that in a second when we talk about what's under the hood. Nine inches of ground clearance and protective skid plates underneath the car, multi-terrain select system and crawl control, which is a lot quieter than it used to be. In the back you get a TRD cat back exhaust. I think it's unnecessary. It's a little droney inside the cabin. I don't think it does anything for performance. It's fine as it is. Now this car will tow up to 11,175 pounds. This one comes with all the towing equipment that you would need. In the back, it has a payload of 1,600 pounds. That's more or less the weight of an American bison. And then altogether with nothing on board, this car weighs in around 6,000 pounds. Now in this particular spec, uh, this one has this sort of softly padded sort of additional bed liner. It already has a spray bed liner on it. So uh, this is I'm not quite sure it's heavy enough that I'm hoping it won't fly out at freeway speeds. So in the back you get uh, four, four different tie downs. You also get 120 volts of power and then these bed lights on either side. So under the hood, the Tundra gets a twin turbo 3.4 liter V6 paired with a 10 speed automatic transmission. This TRD though is only available in hybrid form. They call it iForce Max. So Toyota sandwiched a 48 horsepower electric motor between the engine and the transmission. And then there's a small nickel metal hybrid battery mounted beneath the rear seat more on that later. So in its standard configuration it makes 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. So that was the motor that we had in the limited model we tested a couple of months ago. The hybrid on the other hand churns out 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot. Unfortunately though it does not offer permanent four-wheel drive so expect some burnouts on your way to 60 in a little under six seconds. So as you would expect in a full-size pickup, space in the back is very generous. Uh, I got plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. There's a sunroof here, which I find weird. Passengers also get a nice solid handle for in and out access, two cup holders, some storage space, and plenty of power, including 120 volt AC. There is an armrest with two decent cup holders. Most of the materials are pretty damn solid, but there is a downside. So because the battery is 
under the back seat there's no real storage space here so you do lose out on that and then behind here if you pull this down you get room for jack first aid kit etc so not a lot of storage in the back unfortunately so here we are in the front seat of the uh, Toyota Tundra TRD and it's really nice. Material quality is really good. It's got plenty of storage in the center console. Uh, all of these seats have power, including the passenger. Normally they get gypped on that. Memory seats, you name it. Yeah, this is a really good place to be. Now I did a full review of everything in the cabin, actually the whole car when I did the review of the Toyota Tundra limited version. This is the off-road one. So we're gonna spend a little bit more time off-road, not gonna dwell on the inside of this too much. Still love this main screen. I wish it was sort of pointed towards the driver a bit more. Bunch of physical HVAC buttons. Here's your view camera towing in information. Traction control on or off, probably wanna leave that on because it's basically two-wheel drive on the road. And that's your locking rear diff. Uh, do like this chunky lever here. Parking brake is sort of hidden behind there and as I said there's plenty of room for a phone works through my case it's charging right now even though it's upside down it just all works again generous cup holders this is a fairly small bottle but it'll hold something much much bigger than that if you need it so over on the passenger side you cannot be forgiven for not knowing what vehicle you're in massive letters for Toyota all right so operating the four-wheel drive system uh, it's not an automatic system, so put it in D and then push this down and move the thing to 4H. On the dash here, you'll see it says 4H in green. So to get it to 4 low, you got to engage neutral, push down and move the switch that way. Now in the dash, you've got 4L. The assist systems are turned off and also your traction control on the bottom underneath ready is also turned off. If you find the vehicle slipping, you will use the locker right here. So you can lock the rear. Just one, you'll see it flashing on the dash. And the lockers are on. If you want lockers off, flip it the other way. Same thing in neutral, move to 4H. A little bit of a clunk into 4H, back into D, slip it into 2H, and you're on your way. It's a pretty solid truck so far, but this particular test is gonna be more focused on off-road stuff. So we are gonna head out to some challenging, we hope, trails, so we can test out the suspension, the uh, ground clearance, uh, ascending, descending, hill descent control, everything that this truck supposedly can do and i'm pretty confident it can do a pretty good job by the time we get there so let's test it out and off we go so we are moving along just to get off this little off-road bit in electric only as i mentioned earlier it's just smooth silent quiet but once you put your foot down then the, the V6 kicks in. And it's only slightly obnoxious when, it, when you really put your foot down and you hear that cat back exhaust. I'm, I'm not a fan, but whatever. So, you can now hear. And it sounds good when you're accelerating, but then it sort of stays in the background as a sort of a, a drone. I don't know, it's not, not my favorite noise. But having said that, this thing goes. There's tons of torque, brakes are good too. So zero to 60 takes for a shade under six seconds. I can believe that, but problem is if you mash it from a stop, you are gonna get some wheel spin. So it feels like you're riding a wave of torque uh, I forget which mode I'm in right now. So I'm now in sport mode. I think I was in normal mode. So it's more reluctant to change down when you're in normal mode, but in sport mode, it's gonna use the revs more. But I'll be honest, you don't really need to. I mean, 
even partial throttle gets you going and yeah, because you're sitting high up it doesn't feel as fast but you look down at the speedo and it's like whoa I am going quite quickly uh, this thing is pretty quick I'm kind of impressed and you don't need to stomp on it to have it to go it just goes all that torque kicks in at pretty low RPMs. I mean, 583 foot-pounds. That's a lot. That's got to be more than the, uh, the most powerful F-150 has, I think. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I think that might be more torque than, uh, than anything else. <laughs> it is surprisingly powerful this car and the tires don't seem to make too much noise either I'm, I'm impressed with that too you kind of have to be careful because it does gain speed quicker than you might want and you got to be careful of when the next turn comes up because you got to stop on the brakes luckily they're pretty good brakes steering is light can't feel anything of what the front tires are doing but that is to be expected it's nice and light for off-roading which is what we want so yeah very slow in and then off you go pretty good all right so here we are at the off-road section so we are gonna now see how it does so we're gonna go down this quite steep hill we'll test out the hill descent control we'll see how this truck does my only concern is there's a a dip uh, at the bottom and it's quite a narrow dip so I'm concerned about a the length of the wheelbase and B the overhang at the back so I'm not going to drive it. I'm going to pass it over to our complete professional driver here, John. Here he is. So we're going to switch out real quick. So John, your thoughts on going down this steep hill? Piece of cake. But if I get in any trouble, I'll just run away. <laughs> now I'm really confident. piece of cake so far never lose your car in a parking lot with this thing all right so here we go see how close it gets to the front oh yeah we're good we're good yeah you're good at the back too just missed the back all right. Well, that's a piece of cake for the T TRD Pro. It's just romping through. No problem.
I'm going to swing it wide. Yeah, keep going. Slow. Slow. Looking good. Looking good. Come my way. Come my way. Yeah, that was good. Nice. Actually, uh, you might want to back up just a little bit. There's a huge rock there on your right-hand side. It's nothing too big, but yeah, back up a little bit. Keep going. All right, now turn a little bit more to that way. Not too much. That's good. Yeah, you're good. Keep going. Slow. Slow. Okay, so your back wheel is going to go over a rock there. Straighten up a little bit. Slow, slow. Okay, turn your wheels that way a bit. Slow. Really slow. Really slow. You're good. All right, you're clear. Slow. Okay, slow. You're on a rock, but you're fine. The wheel's tilted that way. So it's gonna, gonna thunk down onto the wheel. So real slow and turn that way a bit. Yeah, keep going. Give it some gas. This wheel's off the ground. The wheel's off the ground. Keep going. Okay, you slipped off the rock. Good. All right, straighten up towards me. Keep going. That's a big car to get through that gap. Take it slow. Pretty close. Turn that way. Okay, little gas. Okay, nice. Gonna flop onto the wheel. Okay, good. Keep going. I'll get out of the way so I don't get run over. All right, so we're gonna go up this uh, fairly rocky slope. Uh, thank goodness we've got nine inches of ground clearance. And we've got it in, uh, I just got it in 4H. I don't think I need uh, 4 low for this section. I will a bit later on. So let's see how we go. Four low requires uh, me to put it in neutral, so I'll find a spot up here to stop. Got some pretty deep ruts up here, so I've got to put it in neutral, push the button, put it in 4L, wait for it to figure out what it wants to do. Yeah, and then we could choose uh, sand. I think it's sandy more than anything else. Okay. Oops, it was in neutral. 
All right, off we go. creating a lot of dust, but we are plowing up to the top of here. See if we can create a little bit of dust. It's fairly smooth along here. We can give it a little bit of power. Oh, so smooth. Huge dust clouds behind. Coming past the car now. And there it goes, all right. All right, so what do we think? Well, I love this truck. Actually, it could be my new favorite full-size pickup. I used to really love the Ram, but this one is my new fave. Great on-road, great off-road. Doesn't have a center diff, so that's a problem if you live in an area where it rains a lot, where you need all-wheel drive on the freeway, but it's a small price to pay. Great truck for here in Southern California because it basically never rains. Anyway, I'm gonna say that this is now my new number one truck. It doesn't haul as much as some of the others, but damn, that engine and hybrid system is great. It's so smooth in its transitions. Uh, yeah, it's a little expensive, $70,000, but most pickup trucks are. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time with another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.